Welcome everyone to another episode of 8 Minutes of Ooh, the place where we use curiosity and science to turn fear into fascination and those oohs into oohs. By the way, I'm your host, Miss Mallory, the curious conservationist and self-proclaimed grossologist. Let's get started. Today, we are diving deep into some pretty daring dung. Why? Because all animals poop. Birds, insects, fish, reptiles, amphibians, mammals, and yes, we all poo-poo too. So whether it's poo, poop, taking a dookie, dropping the kids off at the pool, whatever you want to call it, poop happens. Every living thing on this planet makes waste, even plants. Their waste is the air we breathe. Do you happen to enjoy eating a juicy strawberry or crunchy carrot? Well, more than likely, they came from a plant that was growing in rich soil made from earthworm and insect dung. So let's talk more about how good poop is. Even though it maxes out our gross radar, poo is pretty important. And there are many words to describe animal waste. Cow poop is also known as dung, pies, or chips. All farm animal waste is collectively called manure. Predators like foxes and coyotes construct scat. Grass eaters like deer and rabbits produce pellets. Birds drop droppings. Bats give guano. And if you really want to sound fancy and scientific, you can use words like feces or excreta to describe the gooey mess. And can you believe that animal poop is so popular that there are actual scientists that become excreta experts? They are called, get this, scatologists. They can learn a lot about an animal by looking at the piles it leaves behind. For example, carnivore poop may have hair, bones, and even insect parts in it. Meanwhile, an herbivore pellet may have bits of plants and berries. And an omnivore, well, they may have a mix of both. To some animals, poo is a tasty treat or even a delicious meal. I know, you can say it. Ew. The act of popping a poo-poo snack or feasting on a poo-poo platter, whether of your own or of another, is called coprophagy. It comes from the Greek word copra, meaning dung, and phagos, meaning eating. You may have seen your dog do this a time or two. No one really knows why they do it, but some think they do it because they're lacking certain vitamins or minerals. Most veterinarians would say that the act won't hurt Fido, but you may not want him to lick your face after. But dining on dung is nothing out of the ordinary in the animal kingdom. Rabbits, for instance, eat their poop as part of their daily diet. Their metabolism is so fast, the plant matter that they ate will pass through their digestive system before it's completely broken down. These first round of pellets are called cecotropes, and they're usually black, soft, and full of leftover nutrients. Now, a rabbit doesn't want to go wasting all those precious nutrients, so it will simply give the pellet another run through their intestines to get what was missed the first time. The second round of pelleted goo are made up of much smaller, much harder balls that are often seen in small piles. Now, these second round pellets the rabbits won't eat again. And rabbits aren't the only mammals to nibble on number twos. Non-human primates like chimps and orangutans have been documented doing the deed. And young animals like hippos and elephant calves, they eat the feces of animal members to introduce beneficial bacteria into the gut to aid them in breaking down tough leaves and grasses. Talking about inheriting. Hmm, I think I'll stick to my grandma's cookies. But the animal that takes dung dining to a whole new level is the dung beetle. And according to an article by National Geographic, there are over 8,000 dung beetle species that live throughout the world, living on every continent besides Antarctica. And amazingly enough, North America has about 75 native species cruising around. They come in all colors, from dull black to metallic green. But it isn't the manure the beetle wants. It's the liquid. Mmm, poop water. So apparently, fresher is better. There are different types of dung beetles, too. Scientists group them into dwellers, tunnelers, and rollers. Dwellers find a pile of warm dung 
and are happy as a clam right where they are. Tunnelers will dig around through the warm pile and bury a portion underground. And lastly, we have our rollers, which are personally my favorite. Rollers will gather some of the prize poo into a bowl, roll it away, navigating by the Milky Way, I might add, and then bury it. But this buried treasure isn't just for late night dining. It's used as a nursery too. Okay, everyone, you ready for my coolest and grossest animal poo fact? Well, here it is. Have you ever been to the white sandy beaches of Hawaii? Or maybe you've just seen a picture. Well, each of those beautifully pristine white grains of sand that people just love to lounge in are actually poop from the parrotfish. Yep, I promise, it's the truth. These vibrant tropical fish eat algae, and this algae grows on rocks and dead coral. The parrotfish will use its parrot-like beak, hence the name, to scrape and bite the algae off the rocks but sometimes they ingest bits of rock and coral too. But this isn't a problem for the parrotfish. The inedible calcium carbonate that's found in the rocks and the coral get ground up in their gut and exits as soft white sand. And did you know animal poop is inspiring new inventions and technology? Scientists, engineers, and inventors are studying how animal poop protects seeds and environments that are hard to grow in. You see, when animals ingest plants and fruits, the seeds are passed through their digestive system. Plants use this to their advantage, hoping the animal will fly, walk, hop, scurry, or swim somewhere else before pooping out the seeds, so the plant's genes can be spread to other places. When the seed is passed through the animal's body, the stinky waste functions as a natural protector. This is very important as a seed develops roots and taps into water resources necessary for further development. A new invention called the water box plant cocoon serves as an incubator to help trees survive through their sensitive baby phase and allows the seeds to grow and thrive. The box is designed to protect the ceiling from too much sun and wind, and also helps the new plant collect water. Now this can be very helpful in areas that are hard to grow trees or food, like deserts. Because the water box plant cocoon only needs to be filled once and then uses rain to refill, it gets rid of a lot of the hard work it takes to grow plants where water isn't plentiful. Well, my aspiring grossologists, my eight minutes are up. But before I go, I wanted to ask a favor. Your feedback fuels this program. If this episode changes the way you look at the back end of digestion, or maybe you have a request for another gross but really fascinating topic, please send me a message by clicking the link in the show notes below. Thanks again for joining me and set those notifications so you don't miss another eight minutes of ew. Thanks guys. Have a great week.